In 2020, the Henderson Fire Department responded to over 34,000 incidents. Of those, over 2,000 were in Sun City Anthem. The majority of those were for emergency medical services. However, we also had a few residential fires. Citywide, fires occur about 40% of the time in kitchens and 20% of the time in bedrooms. Hello, my name is Richie Gusikoff and welcome to my house. The National Fire Protection Association has stated that the five major causes of fire in the home are one, cooking fires, two, supplementary heating devices, three, electrical fires, four, fires caused by smoking, and five, fires caused by lit candles. In this video, we're gonna be talking about fire suppressant equipment, specifically fire extinguishers and fire blankets. We will also introduce you to cooking safety and how to cook with caution. And these recommendations will be offered to you by the National Fire Protection Association's recommendations. Perhaps you're considering buying a fire extinguisher or you might already have one. If this is the case, then you should know which one to buy and of course, how to use it. For home use, Fire prevention experts suggest that you should buy an all-purpose dry chemical ABC rated unit. This type of extinguisher works on all fires. They cost about $20 to $40. Other types of extinguishers like carbon dioxide and foam are not ABC rated. This dry chemical fire extinguisher works at all fires. It is rated ABC. It works by spraying out a white powder. There are also smaller fire extinguishers that just work in the kitchen and they're B and C rated. An ABC fire extinguisher simply states as to what type of fires they will put out. An A fire extinguisher works on wood, cloth, and paper. A class B fire extinguisher involves fires that involve flammable oils like cooking oil and other flammable oils like solvents. A class C fire extinguisher works on electrical fires that involve TVs and computers. To ensure that you're comfortable using a fire extinguisher, there are three things you should consider doing. One, you should always place that fire extinguisher in a location between the exit of your house and the potential fire. Two, you should always be checking the valve on the fire extinguisher that it is up to pressure. And three, you should practice removing that fire extinguisher from the wall if it's mounted there and get familiar with that operation. If you're gonna to attempt to put out a fire, be sure that everyone else is out of the house and someone has called the fire department. If you are going to use a fire extinguisher, be sure to operate it correctly. Follow the following steps exactly. Pull the pin, aim at the base of the fire, squeeze the trigger, and sweep the extinguisher from side to side. Be sure that your back is facing the exit. A grease fire in the kitchen can be particularly dangerous. If you catch it early, you can put it out with a fire blanket. In the next segment, we will talk about fire blankets and how to use them. The National Fire Protection Association has stated that the number one cause of home fires start in the kitchen, especially on the stovetop and they offer a couple of suggestions that you should consider. Cook with caution. Stay in the kitchen while you are frying, boiling, grilling, or broiling foods. If you plan to leave the kitchen, turn off the stove. If you are simmering, baking, or roasting food, check it regularly and do not leave the house. Use a timer to remind you that you have something 
cooking. Keep items that can catch on fire away from your stovetop. And lastly, keep hot liquids and foods in the center of your burner with the handles not facing outward. A fire blanket is a great device to have for the kitchen for stovetop fires. Primarily, it should be placed at a convenient location to a stovetop. This is where I place mine. This is a fire blanket. It is a fiberglass material that opens up and it's thrown onto a fire and will smother that fire until it's out. Be sure you don't remove that fire blanket for at least an hour and call the fire department. A fire blanket works by smothering the fire when the blanket is placed over the flames. The fabric simply creates an airtight environment around the fire and eventually ex extinguishes it. A fire blanket is a safe item meant to deal with small scale fires such as burning greasy pans on the stovetop. The blanket will not catch on fire. The fire blanket should be stored in a hanging pouch that fits snugly to a vertical surface and should be kept close to the cooking area in your kitchen. If you do have a grease fire, turn off the gas or electric supply first. Remove the blanket from the container and carefully lay it over the fire. Do not touch the blanket or lift it up for at least an hour after the fire has been extinguished. The fire blanket can only be used once and then it has to be discarded. These blankets do not leave a white power residue after distinguishing the fire. If you want to buy a fire blanket, go to the internet and search fire blankets for the kitchen. The one that I have is one meter by one meter and it's the size that I need so that it covers my cooking area. If you have a larger cooking area, be sure to buy a fire blanket that covers your cooking area. That's the only way it's going to smother whatever fire you might have. The community service group hopes that you found this video informative. To sum up, I want to make sure that you know that the equipment you have should be used correctly and you should practice using it. If you have a comment, please record those comments below and I'll see you next time.